I'm Jonathan Weinberg. Um, today I'm going to do something a little bit different, which is to talk about why it is that I'm so interested or obsessed with fountain pens. Um, I actually started getting involved with pens uh, in high school uh, for some reason back in the 70s. Uh, students started using um, these Schaefer pens in particular. That's what I remember that, that everybody had one of these um, or a version of this. There's a flat bottom version of this as well. And this is a pen that uses a cartridge and it comes in different colors. And for some reason, everybody was using these and particularly the colors. I remember there was one that was a peacock green color, I think, turquoise color that, uh, that a lot of people was very popular and purple. So it wasn't like people were, were so much writing in black ink, but um, they just they just caught on. And then like like those trolls, those little trolls that were so popular, um, suddenly fountain pens ceased to be ceased to be popular. But anyway, that that was sort of I think the time when I first started using using fountain pens. Um, then when I began to be an artist and drew a lot and kept a sketchbook, and I've always kept a sketchbook. Um, I used that, that Schaefer pen, but I, at some point or other, I started, I got a Waterman, um, Phileas pen. I had a few of these and you used to be able to get these at Staples and they weren't very much. They were like $30. And, um, again, I think that I used a cartridge. I'm sure we used cartridges in them or I used a cartridge in them because I don't really think I got into converters and using ink in a pen until relatively recently, like 2017, where I had this sort of year of the fountain pen. I was sort of really into them and started collecting some of them. And then I kind of lost interest. Um, I think I got kind of frustrated with getting so much ink on my hands. And then after COVID, it seems, in the last year or so, I've become obsessed again. And I wonder, well, what, it, what is that all about? And a few days ago, I was uh, reading on Reddit that somebody had written this really beautiful post in which they talked about how uh, writing with a fountain pen was therapeutic for them. That actually, the way in which the pen floats across the paper and the ink comes out is so soothing. And when this person felt depressed or anxious, they would just write for a few minutes and it would calm them. And I thought, that's true. I really do love the way the feel of the pen crossing the page is very, very um, soothing for me. Um, so if I take a really beautiful pen like this, this is the uh, Pelican, Pelican, I guess is one's supposed to pronounce it. Um, uh, 800, M800, and the ink just comes out of this so beautifully, and it's so smooth the way um, it, it crosses the page, and it has just a little bounce and, and a bit of a feedback. It is really lovely, and I remember for years and years, I mean, when I uh, first started to use a word processor, which is now in the early 80s, I had a job and I thought, oh my God, that just is the most extraordinary thing to be able to constantly change what you're writing. And I never would have been able to write a dissertation or a thesis or a book without, without the computer. I, I, at least in my mind, that's how it seems. Uh, I remember in high school rewriting and rewriting and correcting and how what a pain it was to use a typewriter and um, and that's around the time when more and more I stopped writing with a pen as, as I finally was able to afford a computer and I taught people to use computers, more and more I stopped writing. I, had, I always had terrible handwriting and then the act of writing with a ballpoint pen, it, it literally would sort of hurt to write so much, right, with a, with a pen. And then the fact that I couldn't really read or understand what I was writing also was, was a problem. So I was using a pen in my art and my sketching, but I wasn't really using a pen very much to write with um, that, that much. I, 
At various times I kept a journal and I guess I obviously wrote in that, um, but I also journaled on the computer and it was always seemed so important to me to be able to change what I wrote and go back and rewrite and revise what I wrote. Well, suddenly now I find it incredibly liberating to journal and um, so here's my most recent journal and fountain pen sort of led this led to this i mean it sounds bizarre but it was only almost as a justification to having so many fountain pens i felt well i've got to use these fountain pens they have to have some point to them and i started up again keeping a journal with the one thing that is different about my journal is that i'm constantly changing the pens so when I start an entry and I write in my journal every morning when I get up, um, I have to take a particular pill that you have to wait a half an hour before you can eat. So I take my pill, this is like 6.30 in the morning, and then I write about what I did the day before and I change the pen. And at the top of the entry, I say, what is the pen I'm using? You know, Opus 88, what is the ink? What's the date? And then I sometimes I comment about the pen, you know, is it writing well, is it not writing well? And, um, and so when I look through the journal, um, as you can see, well, I don't know if you, yeah, you can see that there's constant change. And I try very hard, the one thing I'm trying very hard is to, is to write slower and to try to write in a, in a better hand. And I think fountain pens really help, help that. So that's been a fantastic thing for me. It really has been uh, a form of therapy. As well as that journal, I'm keeping a separate journal where I'm sort of writing down memories of my life in that journal. And again, it's been very liberating not to go back and change anything. But the handwriting means that you can't change anything. And at the same time, because it's all, all this is being done in a fountain pen, I don't feel like my hand hurts when I write, that it just sort of floats along and I don't have that sensation or that annoying feeling that I used to feel when I would write with a, a ballpoint pen. So that's that's been very terrific. And then the other thing, of course, um, has been uh, keep, keeping returning to sketchbooks. So has I become more and more of a painter and particularly doing portraits and figures in the last uh, 20 years, I've gotten further and further away from drawing. I've always draw. That doesn't mean I don't draw, but I draw on the canvas, which is a lot. There are a lot of artists who, who do that. I mean, you don't think of Monet particularly as an artist who does drawings or um, going all the way back to Titian. There are very few drawings by Titian because he, in essence, drew onto the canvas and then painted over the drawings or used paint to draw. And I love the fact with painting that you constantly can rework and change, and if you make a mistake, correct, right? And that's one of the possible disadvantages or perhaps advantages of using a fountain pen is that, you know, what you put down, you have to sort of accept. It's hard to make corrections. But anyway, I started keeping um, a, a sketchbook again, and particularly a black and white sketchbook. So, so much of my earlier sketchbooks would have been um, full color. They would have had me draw and then watercolor over it. But these, these are all black and white. I'll show some of these under, under the camera. And I started doing figures and and also has a way to use different fountain pens and try out how well do they fill in the blacks, how well do they do cross-hatching. Um, that's all been something that I had stopped doing. And again, it's almost as an idea, oh, I've got to justify using all these fountain pens. It then led back to doing something which is so fundamental and so uh, important in my life as keeping, keeping these journals. So it, it's been really quite wonderful. Now, of course, you, you might be thinking, well, you don't need uh, 100 fountain pens to do all that. And um, so that's another dimension of fountain pens, you know, with the collecting. And, and I suppose there's a kind of our, uh, avarice quality, like why do you need all these different pens? 
Let me say that I don't collect super duper expensive pens. To me, it's really, really important that if I get a pen that I use the pen. Um, I don't, I guess there are people who like the idea of having these as objects and sculpture that they admire. And I have to admit, I have one or two pens that I keep as sort of keepsakes. Um, but for the most part, I use every pen. And a lot of my favorite pens are really inexpensive. I still love these pens, these um, Schaefer pens. The only thing that's wrong with them is that they do not use converters. You can't fit a converter into them. The Schaefer no-nonsense pens can take converters, but they're kind of expensive because they would, Schaefer wanted you to buy the cartridges, right? But they actually, it's amazing how well these pens still write, and they are so, you can still pick them up on eBay for like $10, $15. Um, so, and, and I think you can, I think if you put silicon on them, you can use them as eyedroppers, I suppose. Um, and also, the unfortunately, they don't make the Waterman Phileas pens anymore, but I don't believe they make them, but they, again, are very easy to get um, new old stock and, and inexpensive. Um, I think part of the thing is I love to tinker with things, and fountain pens aren't incredibly complicated, but they're really, I think, really interesting. They're kind of interesting when they don't work. I'm fascinated by the fact that you can get the same pen from the same manufacturer and one will write well, one won't, and you can try yourself um, to use different sandpaper grades to make the pen work, or you can bring your pen to a dim master and they'll make it uh, better. I'm also charmed by the community of people who seem so interested in fountain pens. Uh, as my friend Michael Fiedler says, the people who seem to be involved with fountain pens seem to be some of the nicest people I've ever met. They, they, um, it seems to me that although they say the pen is mightier than a sword, people who care about writing and care about pens are not terribly, don't seem horribly angry. Um, they seem remarkably grounded and, um, uh, and mindful in a way. I guess they're careful about the way they use words, perhaps. Uh, I know this is a gross generalization, but I have so far really enjoyed uh, meeting people uh, through the fountain pen interest and just also enjoyed listening to other reviewers. I mean, that's why I'm doing this, is somehow it's been an excuse for me to, uh, to take my teaching in a different direction. Um, which is interesting because the other thing to say is that this year is when I stopped teaching art history and um, I think anybody would say, wow, well, that's interesting. He's sort of moved from teaching art history to, to being on YouTube and talking about pens. And I think probably as this, go, this obsession goes along, I'm going to try to figure out ways to incorporate more of my own art and maybe some of the art history into the ways that artists use pens and the way, for example, let's say if you're using different kinds of stub nibs to make a drawing, how that might relate to Van Gogh's drawing or how using brown ink might relate to a Rembrandt drawing. Those are the kinds of things that maybe uh, would be interesting to explore in certain um, videos. Uh, so thank you. I knew the new people who are starting to subscribe to my channel. And if all this interests you, I'm interested in people's comments. And uh, also please subscribe. <laughs>